Okay, hello everybody, and we started with a blitz, not broccoli. Um, <laughs> maybe PTK will be shouting broccoli soon because this is going to be uh, rough, isn't it? He's going to get tackled, men's mans up on his dodges. Anyway, that's an exciting start. Um, hello everybody, let's do the intro from Gorilla Metzel. Good afternoon, good evening, whatever part of the planet you're on. Good morning if you're probably Gdanik. Uh, we are here with the Blitz Pit Grand Final. The money is on the line. The two best of the best from this tournament, Wolfbark with his chorfs, Kfog with his delfs. We are going to see a madcap match that is a rematch from two rounds ago in which Wolfbark took him to town on kicks. Can he do it again and claim the prize? Or will the Dark Elf team, will KFO come out victorious? He's in, a, he's in a bit of a bind here with this blitz, but we are gonna kick it off. And that's right, we have a locked and loaded, stacked up commentary. I am Gorilla Mezzo, you already know Jim McMahon. And we are also joined by the demon himself, Rick Reckless, and the sniper, Dio. Hey everybody. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on over there, Jim? <laughs> it's just brilliant. <laughs> Completely epic intro from school on then. Hey, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we are bringing our A game, as you can tell, perfectly professional. We're not loopy from calling multiple Blood Bowl matches. Over the last 24 hours. Uh, looks like nothing too serious from the Blitz, but it's still uh, positionally not the best. Uh, let's go over to our uh, our expert, uh, our expert in all things KFO, Dio. How do you think he's responding to this Blitz to start this half? He'll be grumpy and he'll be grumpy that he lost the kickoff result as well. <laughs> oh yeah well so a uh, blood bowl is a game of emotions absolutely and uh kfo is gonna have to keep his in check if he wants to uh wants to excel this half and uh ooh, not gonna be happy with that push though yeah that's the thing it's gonna be tough mentally isn't it he's playing three games of blood bowl in a row and that with everything that's happened and now he's got he's got blitzed upon going to be tricky. It's really not mattered too much though, has it? Um, there's not any pressure on the ball now. The claw mighty blow didn't fire on the bludge tackle blitzer. Um, he wasn't going to realistically do much on the LOS anyway against uh, Armour 9 Thick Skull and all his dodges have worked. So I think actually he'll he'll be okay now, won't he? Yeah, I think so. I, I would count it as a win because he didn't lose an elf to the blitz. That would That's just like the last thing you want happening right now is yeah. losing an elf this that's early in your draft. That's true, but the guard is going to get claw mighted, and he's going to get some other hits in. So you know, it's it's going to, although he's escaped from it so far, it's going to uh, it's going to have like a future effect as well, isn't it? It's uh, absolutely, yeah, like a compound effect over the drive, isn't it? It's not just like it, the, the initial bit wasn't that bad, but it's still going to be, it's going to be a grim drive, I think. <laughs> Just having to receive is a bit rough, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. One thing I keep seeing in these matches, uh, which it reminds me, but I, I have thought myself in the past, is just how weak compared to people think it is sometimes Claw Mighty Blow can be without piling on. Um, it's really not done the ridiculous amount of damage that uh, that uh, you might have expected. Uh, literally in no game have I seen it walk over a team and eliminate so many that it's won the match uh, for anybody. And uh, he gets yeah. let off the hook there a little bit. That blitz not doing the job, but he is all based up and a bit guard locked here. But yeah, exactly, exactly, uh, exactly, Rick. That is the thing. A lot of people seem to think that uh, Claw Mighty is amazing and Piling On isn't so good, whereas Piling On is uh, is pretty amazing and Claw Mighty isn't so good. <laughs> <laughs> Sur surprised he didn't stick a guy on that uh, lineman there, but there you go. He didn't, and he's straight in for a hit on the uh, Pobble. Yeah, so this time he is going after the AV7s. Uh, last time we saw him decline that to hit uh, Chorfs, so maybe a, a change in the strategy from Corvin. 
Yeah, maybe it's with being some man's dub. He thinks he's got to uh, he's got to do it a bit now. This is a lot of lot of dodges now, isn't it? Yeah. But hey, you know, with elves, you just don't roll one sometimes, and you can really uh, you can really save yourself from almost anything. <laughs> That's very true. That's a very just wondering good about ordering because he's got the two really important pieces next to the claw mighty blow he doesn't want to leave there, but also that lineman on the far right um, is surfable. Yeah, it's not even costly to surf him either, is it really? Like, yeah, it'll strand two uh, two chalk blockers, but the blitz could be with a bull and he could GFI back to the middle. I'm afterwards. really surprised that after dodging away the two positionals, he, he's left the lineman till last. I, I really thought, at the very least, to be third. I was considering dodging him first. Mm. Oof. Oh. Well, if he was going to roll a one that turn, that was the time to do it. But uh, he'd probably love having that little uh, added threat downfield there on the right. Yeah, absolutely. PTK is always all about pushing one way, pushing the other way, and then either turning the corner or pushing back the other way, isn't he? That's what he does so so well. And he's not afraid to get uh, up the pitch early either with his elf teams. Uh, some people like to hold around the LOS and push late, but he will threaten pushing forwards early, and then he is the master of stalling deep in his opponent's half. He can still find ways to switch uh, the play from side to side without an absolutely airtight defense. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm sure Wolfbark knows that and uh, wants to actively hold him up. Not only does Wolfbark know that, he's experienced it in the previous game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is that what we missed. Sorry, we missed the offensive uh, core in that game. So that's, that's yeah. exactly what happened, was it, right? Yeah, it came down to it at the end of that... Uh, at, the end, at the end of the first half there that... Uh, Wolfbark opting for, what was it, a, it was a 1D on Blodge, right, Jim? On Dodge. Oh, it was just Dodge. Yeah, 1D on Dodge. Uh, instead of maybe just taking some hits and a foul because he had the bench available, uh, he did try to jar the ball, and he didn't get anything for it. Um, but he couldn't He couldn't force, he just could not force uh, KFO at a man disadvantage at the time uh, to score sooner. Honestly, this is looking like a carbon copy of the first drive. Yeah, he's it put, sure he's is. He's put two chaffs up here. Look how far, how far forward these two guard chaffs. And now another one. And it, what exactly happened the last time was he had these guys up here, and before you knew it, uh, Kfog had turned the corner on him, and he'd got free, and this whole team was scrambling backwards. And he's almost done the same thing again. Yeah. Now again, he might, you know, those, you know, the hits. His hits in the first game were pretty limp in the first half. So that could turn around for him, but yeah, he spent. I mean, Kfog had almost no resistance when he when he just pushed forward in the next what would be the next two two turns of this game, uh, and then we had all of his chorfs with uh, with guard playing catch up, running back at him. Yeah, <laughs> I'm really surprised how open he's left it up the left here for the dark elf, especially committing the ball to that player on the floor on the right. I don't mind the chorf being there, but it feels unnecessarily. Uh, yeah, defensive to, to have the, the ball sensor on him as well on the far side. So it, the ball's miles away from the play. Yeah. Oh, dear me. Yeah, good point by Necropotence. Big difference here. The, uh, the dodge garter that was getting fouled repeatedly on the line of scrimmage and not set off until he dodged his way off the field <laughs> yeah. uh, is very much in play and very much a part of uh, the defense of the ball right now. Yeah, so this this defense is even worse by Wolfbach, right? Because he wasn't committing a bunch of players to a foul. He's just yeah. putting them here on purpose. <laughs> yeah, it's that lineman, that lineman on the right wing that's eating up both a chorf and a bull, mm. as opposed to like a hobgoblin, is uh, really having an effect. I think the biggest thing is just having the guys too far forward again. He's he's done it. He's like you know four of these. He's this is almost space cadet like. He's got, he's got four chaffs in the other in the other half, hasn't he? That's like that's not good. <laughs> 
if, if we could hold back from insulting my uh, viewership here, <laughs> I'm not insulting him. Do you remember? Do you remember when he did the when he, when he did space, the space? Space Cadet can take it. He's tough. Yeah, yeah it's he, just I just remember Space Cadet. He, he was playing dwarves, and the dwarves had more players next to the ball than he had, or something like that. It was something, but he just had everyone like you know spam thought. I could have done it, Artemis. Artemis did it against uh, Johnny Five. It's just Can like. Just remind me, what's your record against Spice? Sorry. <laughs> oh, I don't know. One one nine or something. <laughs> something horrendous. <laughs> I can't remember ever not losing to him, but apparently I have managed to not, not lose to him on occasion. You mean the Space uh, Men Chalice match, Jim? That was pretty glorious. Yeah, well, that was the one, wasn't it? Where he, he like kind of went too far away from, you know, too far forward, wasn't it? <laughs> one, two, and six. <laughs> Yeah, and Artemis did it against against J Five, where he got his entire team split by one elf. Um, it's the same kind of idea. It's re- and then Wolfbark had done exactly the same thing in the first match, and he's just he's done it again, but by more by choice because he wasn't following that guy. Really weird. Yeah. In, yeah. in all fa- in all fairness to Jim, we can't all snipe Space Cadet at hour twenty of a twenty four hour drinking stream. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. To be fair, Rick, you can't you can't really have a go at me for for saying that I'm insulting him when this is the <laughs> Dios here, the guy who continually abuses him on CCL. <laughs> blind spins, gentlemen. Blind spins. <laughs> Speaking of blind spins, we should go back to the game that none of us are watching: <laughs> the finals of the Blitz Pit. Wolfbar trying to recover and get a defense uh, back in front of these elves. Instead, it looks like he's basically rolling out the red carpet down the left side here for K folk to advance. But some two pluses could go uh, the wrong way for the elves and make this uh, make this a little uh, sticky. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Wolf needs four back, doesn't he? Three back isn't really good enough. Yeah, I would say just he, the, the the he's he lost it earlier, didn't he? he should have he should have learned from the first game, um, and he didn't, you know. I think. I mean, this is legitimately the exact same thing Kfo did in the first in the first game. Same side too, same motion, and same side, and everything. Yeah. I said that uh, K Fool's the master of switching sides in his opponent's half, um, but uh, maybe maybe Wolfbark feels confident here that he can cut him off and force the force the early score. Well, yeah, I mean that was a big part of the first game, uh, and see you can see K Fool setting up to allow for it again with that witch move, so where he can cut back into the middle and just toe tap right on uh, the end zone there. Uh, but, uh, you know, a good, you know, maybe a good hit there on that tackler could uh, just force him to have to go one direction, and that's straightforward, but uh, it's not looking very likely. With, with three rerolls still for Wolfpark, um, I don't think he'll do this, but my play would be to double GFI Blitz the Witch with the tackle uh, Thor piece, which also gets him down into a position to help the Bulls and the Hobgoblins out from holding up the, the Dark Elves. Mm. Just getting that additional chance to get the witch down, and she is the armor seven piece along with the runner, of course. Uh, I think you know, just try and use your rerolls. Your rerolls in the first half are such a luxury compared to later on. Yeah, um, yeah, Satterfield. you you did Necro. Sorry, I just looked at this Satterfield. I would always receive first in this half. Um, in in this format, I would always receive first half because of the overtime, you know, it, it, on offense, you're much more likely to need to use a reroll than you are in defense. So I would always, I would always receive if I could. I, so I really agree with you there, Jim, but let me bring Dio in on this because um, Dio has said to me in the past that he feels that he's more confident in uh, not using rerolls on offense than defense. So how does that work for you, Dio? I kick all the time for inevitability here. Uh, especially as the dwarves, or as the as the uh, dark elves, I'd want to kick as well. If I if I could play dark elves in Blitz Pit and guarantee that I get to kick every game, then that would be amazing. It's having to receive sometimes that's the problem. And and yeah, why why is that? Because you didn't you just because you I spend my rerolls on defense. 
And then you can see so you've got all your men to you've got all your men on defense then, and you can spend all your rerolls on that and see how it goes. And then I don't spend rerolls on offense. You don't you don't really need to. And I think I'd have to see it in action to really understand that. Like I, yeah, it, it's just hard for me at my level of ability to imagine myself not using rerolls on offense. <laughs> Yeah, you're more likely to have to use a reroll on offense, for sure. What yeah, because you can just eat anything on defense. Because basically what you what normal mindset is going into these games is that you need to turn eight score on your offense and that your opponent's likely to turn eight score on their offense and anything else is a bonus. So you can just eat anything on defense and try it without rerolls. But on your offense, you've got to make sure you're doing that eight turn uh, score, which, which again, yeah, just seems like if the dice go wrong, that's where you need to be putting the rerolls in. So I guess, I, yeah. I, I guess Dio's point is you get more value from rerolls on defense. Like you can try things on defense with rerolls, and you can't try things on offense with rerolls because you've just got to play. Like there's only one way to play on offense, isn't there? Which is safe and trying to not use rerolls anyway. So I can see what he's saying actually. This is, this is exactly what I did in Blitz Pit One was I played dwarves and kicked every single game. Hmm. Well, it worked, so it must have been right. Oh boy, this could get ugly. <laughs> oh! oh! And there's the snakes and the stun. And now that strategy that worked so well in game one could come back and really bite Kayfog in the ass here. <laughs> we might actually see a dump off. Yeah, we sure might. He couldn't. I, I... He couldn't. I'd be strongly thinking about basing up those two players near the ball carrier before attempting the the sack here. Yeah, there's yeah. absolutely not going to be a. a there's no way there's going to be a dump off because he'll de he'll definitely swarm everybody before he makes the makes the blitz. People do yeah. forget though, and I realise Wolfpack's such a top player, he probably won't. But uh, <laughs> but it, again, the pressure, the time they've been playing, the one minute turn format, uh, it wouldn't be impossible for Wolfpack to forget about dump off. Nah. <laughs> 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 it's got the show hands right there. He, it's horrible, isn't it? I can't get the knockdown. Hmm. Very surprised at that hit. Yeah, because he was the one who could break tackle at least, couldn't he? Whereas this one can't. So now he has to do it on a GFI with the claw paw, or the claw mighty. Yeah, but he's got tackle, which is nice. Anyway, isn't it? Okay, I disregard then. He hasn't. He hasn't put that guy yeah. in. Yeah. Wow. Wow. That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and the catch as well. And the catch was a two. Yep. So if he put that guy in first, like I knew he would. <laughs> <laughs> cough, cough. Called it. Cough, cough. <laughs> Yeah, but again, Wolfbark's at 16 seconds. We know he likes to take a lot of time on his turns. Might have just missed that, trying to figure out the best uh, the best way to hit the ball. You know, that's the problem with the format. Sometimes it can get it can uh, it can move a little bit quicker than your brain, even if you're a really really good coach. Yeah. I guess this way he gets to make a GFI to be in a better spot there. Okay, but. Uh, I don't think so, Volt. We normally get the date for the next Blitz Pit about two or three weeks after the previous one. So, no, I, as far as I'm aware, we're, we're not sure when the next one is. They're roughly every six to eight weeks, something like that. 8th to 9th November. Oh, well, there we go. I'm completely wrong. 8th <laughs> to 9th November is... is I, I didn't know if that had been announced yet, but yeah. Because they're doing qualifiers this, uh, I think, or something of some kind. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. interesting. There's an open qualifier sign up channel that's open and available to everybody, so. Uh, no, Mr. Let me, um, let me I don't know that it's actually open right now, Daya. But I think there, it's going to be. Sign up. So if, if anyone feels like we can support Blitz, the third link there in my chat is, uh, is the Patreon page. Uh, people very kindly uh, give towards the prize pool and the running costs of this tournament, so. Uh, 
yeah, if, uh, if anybody can uh, donate and keep this fantastic tournament going, then that, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated by all involved. The final toe. <laughs> Blitz Pit 7. Yep, I put the link in mine as well. There you go. I also put the link in my uh, uh, stream chat. <laughs> Oof. Oh, there you go, <laughs> Well, I think he's got a shot at the ball here. Sure looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, the claw might blow again. Oh, I don't know. No, it's this. Sorry, the break tackle piece is is probably the uh, the only one that can. Or the hobgoblins. It's it's tricky. It's not great for the dwarves this turn. Yeah, you can't get it with tackle. I think you've got to just blitz with the sure hands here, yeah. or whatever. Okay, he's not blitzing with the sure hands guy. <laughs> I would have blitzed with him. He's got four plus two plus two plus uh, with the poor mighty blow, and he's got two re rolls. I wouldn't hate to see that. This seems crazy. What's his idea there? Hitting with tackle mighty blow. How? Well, uh, clear the clear the tackle piece and then dodge through four plus two plus two plus five plus. Oh, this oh. way. Okay, yeah, four plus. Okay, yeah, one two yeah, three, yeah. four one two three four GFI G. Okay, yeah, double GFI and a dodge. <sighs> Crikey! I'd rather just hit without tackle, to be honest. <laughs> I think with it being Claw Mighty Blow as well on a really great piece, like there's you, there's a chance for a double reward. He's got to do it though. <laughs> time. Just just run out of time. That's a bit. Oh no, he's doing it. He's not blitzing. Is he not? Didn't come up with a blitz thing. He went blitz. for the five plus. It's yeah, come up now. He went for the five plus. He did the wrong thing. Not as Wolfbark. Not as good as Rick confirmed. And other than the fact that he beat me in the tournament earlier, I completely agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> that is vastly superior CCL records. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Other, other than those, totally right. <laughs> oh, he's double one! Double one! Oh my goodness! Whoa. What a turnaround! This just reeks of that same thing, that misclick. Like, obviously, he didn't, uh, Wolfbark didn't misclick here necessarily, but. Uh, when he misclicked in the last game, and then the oh. scatter went right into his hands to save him. That double one might have just saved him. I mean, he shouldn't that... start with that, though, right? He should have started with a witch blitz or whatever. Absolutely. Yeah. Right there. What absolute disaster. Surely that was a, a misordering there, but I mean, he's only got one minute turns, so fair enough. But, but like Dio subtly criticised him earlier, he does start his turns out very quickly, he didn't take any time at all there, and I think you are right, Jim. Yeah. Actually, so now, Wolfbark's worst play of the 5 plus dodge is looking better, because he doesn't have to GFI the Blitz anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Totally genius, yeah. <laughs> Kofal's quick, quick starting of turns actually isn't so bad in Blitz Pit, because then as he gets to adjust, he's got plenty of times, but he does it in Chalice as well at 3 minutes, starts in the first 2 seconds. He's got yeah, them now I, I, here. I do quite like it for a lot of turns of this bit. Well, the good thing for Kfog is there's no shot of uh, the Chorf's uh, scoring here, so. Yeah. Yeah, very good point. He's Even if he GFIs four times, he won't get there. <laughs> yeah. Not sure about the relevant block there. He's got to go for the sure hands pickup, surely. And now he can break tackle for more support. It's on low now. He's just going to block him. I don't like that. I don't like the Randor block. I'll be honest with you, I don't like the Randor block there. I, I definitely like the punt here. It's so easy to get it out of range of the elves. You like the punt? I yeah. never like punting. Of course you do, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think this is quite an easy sack. 
you get the ball across, it, it, the recovery is a lot harder, though. Yeah, he could have he could have been standing where that blitz came from. His ball could have been stood there, couldn't he? If he'd uh, broke Ooh, tackle there is a shot through. though. This looks like an elf score to me. It's gonna no be tough, roll. but it, there is oh, no, yeah. a shot. No reroll, yeah. With with reroll, I'm fancying it. Yeah, good point. No rerolls, not good. Yeah. Still well possible, obviously, because elves. <laughs> I would uh, strongly consider making the uh, the the dodge tackler uh, a bobble yep. box uh, option again. Oh, yeah. I think you two, I'm getting the ball with it. Yeah, and actually, you could do all three. Yeah, you can do all three of them because they're not against tackle. Nope, he's going for the ball with him. Okay. Oh no! Oh no! No! Yeah, he probably should have put that blood stepper. You're right. Get that blood stepper in there first, just in case. It doesn't help. Oh, it, sorry, it does for the catch in the end zone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah bobble in box. Case I was thinking for the pickup, I was confused, but yeah, the end zone bobble box. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Just surfed, surfed elf. Got hit elf. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And the claw mighty blow as well with tackle. Yeah, this, this could be an ugly turn. Yeah. Yeah, that's not impossible for elves, is it, PC? If if it had been with a reroll, which was initially what I thought I hadn't realised Cape Paul had run out of rerolls, uh, then then you fancy them, don't you, on that? Yeah, I would have fancied him if he had the reroll. Yeah. Yeah. Without it, it's it's a lot harder, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it's it's amazing um, how how much uh, a reroll adds to your percentage on a on a play. Double surf coming up. Probably, yeah. Oh, maybe not then. Yeah, wrong order, you do the hop block first, don't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's hard to position the ball where you want it now. Yeah. Works out for him, though. Does he, does he do the three plus dodge? Break tackle dodge? <laughs> yeah, tempting. If he realizes his, his mistake. I, I, yeah. Imagine if he failed it though and cast himself. I guess. Yeah, it'd be a rough way. Yeah, rough rough way to... Oh wow, well, correct decision. Because look at the. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, 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 right. Got to be foul. He's got the reserve. He's got a foul, right? Yeah. 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 He absolutely does. If he's doing this, the ball could have been an extra assist, couldn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, uh, does not get the score. Kafo still averts a bit of disaster on the uh, the last few hits there in the last turn. Could have lost half his team very easily. And uh, oh no, but the chaos. Yeah. The chaos. Out. yeah. Oof. So uh, we're, we're halfway to GG. We're at G. <laughs> Yeah, that's really huge, isn't it? I know they're just rubbish linos, but still, numbers it exposes the better players more, and it, it's still numbers, isn't it, at the end of the day? Yeah, that's pretty much why I like to kick, to start with. <laughs> it's the same difference. <laughs> having 11 for your defence is pretty nice. So is having 11 for your offence. <laughs> I think it's pretty much a wash. I mean, I can see your point. You did say to me that you viewed that opposite to me. Like a year ago, somebody was saying that to me. It might be Nori. What? I did. I, I brought this up with you not so long ago, Theo, a few weeks back. Um, I was surprised yeah, at your viewpoint on it, but uh, I, I massively respect it. It's worked for you amazingly well. So, but I, I'm still surprised by it. I can't quite get my head around it. I mean, I'd still kick against one turners, obviously, but um, like normally in a normal game, I'd kick just because it gives you more knowledge of what to do and everything, and oh, you start yeah. defending with eleven players, all that stuff. But just the the overtime specifically, um, I just that's it. I just I would yeah, exactly. not have to use my rerolls. One hundred percent of the time on the ladder, for example, but but yeah, with overtime format, and I can see like I can understand Dio's argument. I just can't quite. It's inevitability. Out. As the dwarves, for instance, I'd want to kick because then you don't, you don't, you're not, you won't be facing eleven, and you'll you'll only be facing say eight, nine, ten on your offense, and you'll score. 
and then you'll get to overtime. Even if he scored, then that's fine. You go into overtime. Because he's got 11 men and you're the bash side, he's the one that wants to shorten the game. So you want to lengthen the game and you gain inevitability. Okay, now that I get. So that makes a lot of sense to me, that if you're a team that really relies on removals to get your offense to work, like Dwarves, um, then having it as the second half, where you've had a whole half where you can do removals, yeah, that, that makes some sense to me. Okay, I like that. Yeah, that makes sense. If you haven't got the confidence to score against 11 men, <laughs> then yeah. <laughs> Way! <laughs> I think a lot of it comes down to which part of the game you're you're more comfortable in as well, the offense or the defense. And anybody that's watched my stream knows that I very rarely bother scoring in my own drive. Well, this is, uh, was, it wasn't a devastating LOS, was it? But it's almost like he made two removals on the LOS anyway, the fact that they didn't return from Chaos, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I was going to say that. He started with two removals. <laughs> yeah. uh, apologies to PC. Yeah, I wasn't trying to make a blanket statement that Dwarves absolutely rely on, on removals for, uh, for successful offences. There, there are some excellent Dwarf coaches that, that can achieve that even without... Uh, I, I certainly am not one. I, I have no particular success with Dwarves myself, but uh, I have watched top Dwarf coaches do very, very well on uh, even in matches where they've had a really dry attrition run. But it, at least explaining it that way uh, as more of a general thing made, made more sense to me why you might want to uh, kick first. Yeah, it depends how happy you are with going overtime as well, isn't it? Like how much you back yourself to win in normal time and there's a, there's a bunch of goals in it to be fair mm. uh with blitz pit now that it's gone to, now that it's 16 men rather than the initial eight going to overtime in every game is your main plan is a lot weaker because you get tired from yeah. all those from the long games yeah for sure oh so therefore being able to use your rerolls on defense is more chance to win in normal time this this witch can't be delighted where she's found herself right no, no, probably not. And she's uh, not going to get any help. No. This could be a double surf, surely. Maybe it's even, maybe, you know, not more than double. It should be a double surf, shouldn't it? Probably. I feel I, like I'd it, like to see that, yeah. I feel like it should be a double surf. You can put one one chaff to hold these three guys, which is lovely, and he can totally overcommit and spam a load of guys over here and get triple serve. Not triple, double serve. He probably couldn't do a triple, right? Double. We kind of glossed over Wolf's uh, very sensible decision not to attempt the pick up on the sideline ball, but just put the hop there nice and early. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, that yeah. is a really good call. Yeah, I, it's a lesson that I spent a very long time learning. I should have got it a bit sooner, uh, really. That, yeah, sometimes rather than waiting to do the GFI pickup uh, later in your offensive turn, when sometimes you can even turn over earlier than that for various reasons, just shoving the hobgoblin there so the GFI isn't there next turn. Um, and if worst comes to the worst, they do get through. You've got a man next to the ball. Yeah, it's a really, really good choice from Wolf. Yeah. Maybe you just surf the garter and then that's the most important one gone, isn't it? And then you don't have to uh, try and work anything out cleverly. <laughs> yeah, I think that's. A, I think this is a much more sensible plan than trying for trying for too much because you don't need too much, do you? Yeah, true. And you've got half his team in a little box on the sideline. Yeah. <laughs> next turn, anyway. Yeah. Just all run out of time with three seconds left. That's the uh, killer, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, this is a devastating loss for Core, this guard piece. Already two players down. Such an important piece for him. Hello, Lemon. Dangerous game from, Le from Wolfbar, because he's, he's had that, he's ha he has had that in matches before, hasn't he? With his, uh, you know, not running out of time, but actually running out of time thing. 
So he probably probably shouldn't run them run the clock down as much as he does. Uh, both of us down in core are missing the fact that actually on kick equity he is winning right now. Kick <laughs> equity feeds into match equity. I wish people would stop misusing these uh, 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 uh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Feeling desperate Ooh. now, PTK. Oh, oh, look at that. Could get it out of the pitch here. He does. He does. Oh. Oh, man. And he's got a free guy there that can get pretty damn close. <laughs> oh, devastating. Oh, oh, dodge yet. I think he needs to make at least a three plus and tie that hobgoblin up. He tries. Oh. He can't oh, make the second one, can he? Yeah, he can't. This is very hard, isn't it, for Wolfbark to get to the ball this turn coming? Yeah. Oh. PTK, look at this. The moves. It's, he's, it's like he's hopping over the rope to get in the ring, Jim. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, elf time confirmed, folks. Fucking elves, man. <laughs> Well, Wolf could have just brought people back instead of committing so heavily to the side because you didn't need that many players just to surf the one piece. Yeah, true, true. I think he was going for the double surf until he rolled double powers on the runner on the blitz. PTK stands for primetime Kev or, or past tense KFO. <laughs> Take your pick. Whatever it is, that's why he's PTK in the JFW and beyond. <laughs> Yeah, I think what happened was, I think he was thinking about a triple surf and everything and trying to work it all out, and that just ate so much time that he was just like, fuck it, I'll mash some guys in and go for this. <laughs> and it's probably cost him. Gets a lovely cheeky power there, doesn't he? That is nice. Needs a lot more than just that, but it is a good start. Yeah, he could have just, and as Squill did, said he could have just kept the ball back. Yeah, very good point. Unbelievable opportunity for the Owls. If they score, they get their guard blitzer back. They get another shot at the two KOs, and they very, very, very likely get overtime. Just unbelievably huge moment. I think they very I, likely win if they score here. Yeah. If Fetter to score straight away, he's still got a chance. If you if you let him stall the turn or two, then you're dead. I love how you can never count out elves. It's just amazing what they can uh, pull out. It wasn't even that hard, was it? It was a four plus dodge from tackle into a one dice on the ball, forty percent. Just yeah, I was a bit surprised that was on. Oh. oh. Oh, I'm surprised he went for that because he could have he could have put the guy in the middle, couldn't he? And then just I think he had to because it, it's the only way the hobgoblin and the bull centaur can uh, can get relevant again. Yeah, I guess yeah. Three seconds to do Running everything. Out of time. Running out of time. He hasn't moved the ball. <gasps> oh God! He hasn't picked it up. Oh my Bulls God! Do not like not picking it up. Holy shit! Oh, you can oh, pick it up with the ball. Oh, oh. He does. He does. Oh, dear. Oh, well, that's why he didn't pick it up. Wow, incredible. All oh, that with one second to go, too. He's taking years off my life, but Wolf's time management is second to none. Like, yeah. I kept my count by a split second. He's getting everything in right at the last second. I don't know how he does it so precisely. Wow. Incredibly. Yeah, it's true, Shattered Dice, yeah, so like it was harder, much harder to get it, well not much harder, just a 4% of a 3 plus on it, but harder to get it on the ball, but yeah, so much payoff for getting it on the ball, I guess, you had to, yeah, that's very much. Do you try and get the, oh no, he's not, I, I was wondering if you roll the dice to try and get an assist on the, on the ball here for a 1 dice, but, oh, 
Thought he might break armor there, would have helped him out a bit. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, just the, this amount of pressure might get him to kick spine there if you can, if you can stop him moving forward well enough. It's not on the break tackle ball. No. He can chain him. He can chain him free, can't he? If he can get two dice. Which he can't really very well. No, it's very, very hard to get two dice, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, no, the bull can. If you do all three GFIs and the break tackle, then the, the bull can just two dice. Him. Yeah. It doesn't even need a break. Oh, yeah, he's got a break. He's marked by somebody. Uh, yeah, he can knock these guys down first, clear a path for him, and then... Uh, yeah, that's, that's fair enough, isn't it? Takes the wrestle. Yeah, PC. Yeah, but yeah. Not tackle. That's a good point, isn't it? Yeah, that uh, you're not hitting with tackle. So yeah, maybe the. Uh, but that's why he's brought the hot goblin in, isn't it? He's doing it with the the guard jaw to get the tackle. Yeah. Makes both GFIs. Doesn't oh, get the push. Doesn't. Or pal. Rerolls and just gets a push that time. He's gonna have to come up with something else now. I don't like the reroll there because you, you've got five percent more chance of getting the power than the, the four plus dodge, but you're significantly more likely to be using your um, your reroll. Well, I wouldn't have dodged. I just blocked. Or yeah, or just stay there. Like you've got multiple options. Yeah, I just block at the end. Wolf's Wolf's running out of uh, rerolls now. This is fine though, isn't it? Because now the he can't get two dice on the ball at all. Yeah, yeah, ab yeah, absolutely. So, so why reroll? Because the, with the both down, he would have been further away, wouldn't he? Wouldn't oh, all right, yeah, he won in nine. Okay, fair play. Yeah, he wasn't just trying to get a power, he was trying to get a push. It already worked out that the push was good enough, but the uh, yeah, the one in nine wasn't. Yeah, I guess I was trying the bull dodge, but that uh, comes with a uh, significant risk. Now the which else relevant isn't she? Thank, relevant thanks to uh, what's it called? Jump up. So this is interesting. He's got a bunch of players free. Something could happen here. <laughs> Something could happen. How exciting! Mark the hob. Blitz through the guard from the let from the centre, and then you get two dice on the ball. Yeah, well, he started with this GFI. Makes it. Now he's got no rerolls. Probably yeah, should start with safe moves first. With the rush roll, and it just didn't work out for him, Jim. <laughs> should have started safe moves first, shouldn't he? This is nice. Schoolboy error. Not starting with safe moves first. Oh. Oh, wrestle. That was a bit weird, wasn't it? I don't think. If he pushes thing. through the hob instead, he gets two dice on the ball. Yeah, that's what I thought he was doing. Yeah. Now he gets. Uh, Oh, he gets reds. You oh, pray, which red. you probably don't even take, right? <laughs> no, not when you've got a blood step of that. Yeah. One minute turns exactly. It's tough, and also playing loads of bloodborne in one day. Um, I'm sure if he was, I'm sure if he had, if he was playing in rebel with 72 minute turns and uh, fresh as a daisy, he would have done the right thing. <laughs> The cellist game was his own choice. <laughs> 
Yeah, it, it is. It, it can be brutal, can't it? One minute, like because they're not playing idiots in one minute, is it? That's the thing. Like if they, if they were playing in, uh, you know, maybe Rebel G Man One, with one minute turns, they'd be all right. But this is Blitzpit, baby, and it's all the best players in the world. <laughs> Especially after the first two rounds, Jim's By the time we've been eliminated, there's really no idiots left, and it gets really tough. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Chunter, you're one of the competent people in G-Man Rebel 1. <laughs> there's about there's about three good coaches, isn't there, in G-Man Rebel 1? <laughs> no, pal. He's got the, uh, he's got the, uh, the squares pill, so the blood step now off the ball. It's hard to get the touchdown now, isn't it? There's about seven terrible coaches in G-Man 1, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Without even joking or exaggerating, I'd say about seven or terrible. And then uh, there's some competent ones and some good ones. All carrier now in range. Yeah. You'd be one of the competent ones, Calcium, if you were in G Man 1. <laughs> <laughs> You definitely wouldn't be one of the shitters. <laughs> I thought I was being nice, sorry Calcium, I just thought you were <laughs> I just thought you were wanting to not be a shitter. <laughs> oh dear. You know, I like JFW, maybe he's trying not to lose McNaughton seven times in a row. <laughs> Opportunity seems to be gone now for the for the elves. What what are you trying to do again now? Are you just hopeful that with so few time, so few turns left, that you can get right side again and screen off the the chores until overtime? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's just playing for overtime now, isn't he? Pretty much. He had a really nice turn. Blitz to free up players, got people back behind the ball. Yeah. Yeah, it's still still tough for Wolfbark. Like that, just like all that pissing about in the backfield has made it tricky, hasn't it? Yeah, he's now got two really deep chores that aren't going to be any, or three in fact, that aren't really going to be any help uh, in the scoring, and two, probably the two deepest hot goblins as well are going to really struggle to keep up. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and the one on the floor, for that matter. Yeah, it's, it, it's very very hard to see Wolfbark scoring here, actually. I mean, the good thing is he's got the ball in the strength for block guy, isn't it? Which is pretty yeah, nice. It should be fine for overtime, but uh, yeah, he shouldn't get sacked anymore, but but scoring is a, a whole another kettle of fish. Yep. Do fish go in a kettle? <laughs> what? They must have done some point, right? I've never seen it. I've never heard of anybody doing it, but <laughs> you don't just make up something like that as a saying, do you? <laughs> I don't like th I don't like this. I would have moved the I would have moved the bull first and been over the halfway line to you know to assist. I, I, I don't know. I don't know about this. But who's to say whether it was wrong or right? <laughs> this is going to be super based around the ball. I don't know where the ball's going. I think it's going to be in between the guard and the other guy. Uh, that's a super based cage. If he's going in there. I don't see where else he can go. Leaving himself two GFIs for no reason. Don't like it. Oh. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, yeah, so we can go through every member of chat and say whether they'd be competent in G-Man 1. Dimmy G would get would get relegated before the season started due to the administrative error that got him in G-Man 1. <laughs> ah, big... Big decision to reroll. Like we joked about it earlier, but kick equity is suddenly, genuinely very, very relevant again. <laughs> um, so yeah, Wolfbart going down to one reroll here is uh, is, is got to be a concern. Very big, yeah, because you know you might well need two rerolls in in overtime anyway, even if you're going to win it. Yeah, uh, yeah, even if it doesn't go to kicks, absolutely. Yeah. 
<laughs> All right, Jimmy. <laughs> it's fine, he has show feet. Yeah, that's true, Shawnee. As we've just seen, double ones never happen. I don't, I don't think he needed to re-roll out either. I think mm. he's a, he would have been okay. Is he any, <laughs> any danger of getting sacked here and losing the score? Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, he oh. rolled the one. Doesn't really roll it. And now maybe uh, Wobble Bark can get somewhere. He might just stay nine squares away, right? So that he's. He can. Uh, or eight. He's got to go eight in case he gets pushed, I guess. Do you guys like eating that last one? Feels like, feels like it, it's a very good defense if we get that guy back. I, yeah, I love eating it. I, it's the same as the Wolfbart one, really. I, I don't think it changes anything. I think that the defense is already really, really good. I can't see any way that Wolfbart's scoring. And I just think that rerolls are the absolute critical factor at this moment in time in this match. Until the coin flip happens, um, rerolls are the most important thing now for the rest of this drive for both coaches. You can't see any way Wolfbart's scoring. No, he can't get enough support. He'd, he'd have to completely potato the ball. Yeah, that's pretty decent, isn't it? No, because <laughs> then... I think it's pretty decent. The I think he can get pretty yeah, decent. Yeah, he can He can, He can. can basically account for everyone but the witch who's going to have to... Oh, or my <laughs> my replay froze because I thought he ran out of time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we needed that last bit, sir, to defend. Oh, I think he should have blocked, blocked back and not blocked with him. No, 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 God, I can't see. Yeah, you can just walk through. It doesn't matter. Uh, so, to my, I, obviously, my co-commentators are disagreeing with Mr. Lovejoy. He's asking, is the potato better than not scoring? My, my opinion is no. I think the, there's too high a risk of getting sacked and the elves scoring against you. So, I would just be now playing for the overtime, probably, as the chores. Nah, he's strength four. You've got to go for it. I, I don't like that, actually. I think he should have blocked, blocked the other guy, blocked that guy, and then uh, used the hobs to get forward as well. I didn't really like that, how he did it. No, you're either getting sacked or you're getting served, and that's a sack in itself, and uh, both are horrible. Yeah. Running out of time. He's got to foul, foul this guy in scoring range, hasn't he? I'm telling you guys, this is an elf win in normal time. Mark some people up, one of the two. We space him and then get these three hops doing something in one second. Chunter into Chunter Blitz for the surf, yeah. Yeah, I mean... It's not looking good, is it, having to do an uphill into an uphill to stop the score, so I wouldn't call that... Yeah, I wouldn't call it great. It's pretty, it's, it's pretty big favourite to work. Yeah. 70%. He's got to commit a reroll, though, hasn't he? Here we go. Red into red for the surf. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Well, what do I know? Good game, Wolf Park. <laughs> Still got GFI. Unless he chains forward. Could chain him forward one, couldn't he? Kind of easily. And it's time to get another guy around. Yeah, another another snake. Not that it wasn't fully relevant because it was red dice, but yet another snake. We have seen an absolute ton this drive for both coaches. To be fair, yeah, you can't fit in the square for the uh, for the chain. Oh, maybe if you pass him one, two, three, four, five. No, he can't. He can't really fit in the square. Two GFIs then. Yeah, I don't think he should have been there. I don't think he should have been surfable. Like so. That, I think that was on Wolfbard making his guy surf a book. You know? Could have just been one one further in. But even that, Mr. Lovejoy, with a reroll, is only 4 plus 4 plus. That's a 50 50 chance with reroll. 
and he shouldn't have even been given the chance. I, I feel for Core here. I think he's played really well. All right, well, he is down, but not quite out. He will still get a one-turn attempt here. Yeah, Chunter, I, th I think Guy was right about having to take the reroll because his defense wasn't good without him there. Yeah. That's what I thought. I didn't like. I didn't like the defense without him. <laughs> so, yeah, the one turn. He's got a reroll for it. He's got a chance. Got 10 men. He's one of the best one-turners, isn't he, uh, PTK? He's, he's, he's incredible. Absolutely incredible, yeah. I have him about second in the world at it, yeah. After yourself, Dio? <laughs> After Hawker, I'm, I'm quite a long way behind in this aspect of the game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Shawnee, it must be, mustn't it? Yeah, PC, yeah, if you if you dodge, it's got to work, yeah. Yeah, Mayhems, this is it. This is absolutely it. Uh, if K-Full makes the one turn, we have overtime. And if he doesn't, we have Wolfbark, the new Blitzbit champion. And he has had a wonderful tournament, Wolfbark. He's done it all through the winner's bracket. He hasn't lost to anybody. We haven't seen anyone do it through the winner's bracket for a long time. Um, and, uh, yeah, got to the final last time as well. Very deserving coach. Yeah. That being said, he hasn't got it yet. That's true. That's very true. Oh, that could screw it up. Ooh. Oh, where's the ball? Oh, touch ball, go to death. Makes a gap, though. Makes a gap. Where's oh, the ball? Yeah. Oh. oh, off the pitch? Is that why it's not showing up? Yeah, it where is. is it? Is it touch back? No, no it's there. Oh, it's uh, retrievable. It's yeah. retrievable. Yeah. Yeah. Might have dodged a bullet there. It doesn't go for the dodge into the other guy. Wow. Oh. Wow. Uh, why didn't he go for the dodge on the other guy? Yeah. Okay, definitely second best PTK. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's, that's the commentator's curse, isn't it? Great at one turns, this chap. Oh, he just blitzes the wrong guy after that. <laughs> he's 55% to get a push on the one dice, and he's 75% to make the dodge. Uh, yeah, he's definitely better making the dodge. He's two plus to make the dodge. Oh, sorry, you're dodging. Yeah, up and back in because of the removal. Oh, gosh. Yeah, sorry. I was just thinking straight across. Yeah, that's yeah. even better. Holy moly. <laughs> yeah. That better. Classic, classic turn 16 foul. <laughs> <laughs> Ever the showman. <laughs> the Apo comes out. Power Apo, indeed. The ultimate Power Apo. <laughs> <laughs> well, that looks like it's going to do it. Congratulations, Wolf Park winner of Blitz Pit, the final toe. <laughs> yeah, absolutely glorious. Congrats to Wolf Park, and uh, thank you very much. Gorilla Metzor, Dionysian, and Rick Reckless. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.